Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gun World magazine, Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Well, we've got an interesting video today. I had a message from one of the viewers who said, Gary, I shoot in my garden, I've got 40, 45 yards. I'm only interested in springers because I don't want all the faff of diving bottles and everything like that. How precise can you get with a spring gun? Precision shooting out to 40 yards. Now, that's something that I love doing, and as it doesn't require range finding, which I currently suck at, is something I'm hoping that I can do. So I thought, I'll drag my TX out today, my competition gun, which I used at the weekend, and let's see what sort of groups we can get, and more importantly, what we can do, or what happens when all of a sudden your groups go bad. So hopefully we can learn about a couple of pitfalls to avoid, and, and let's see how we go. Also, I'm not sure I've just put them, we have just got, it's just arrived, we've got some Barracuda 8 from H&N. These are the pellets that everyone is going nuts about. Now these ones are in 451s and I usually shoot 452s. So what we're going to do is at the end of the video, we're not going to clean a barrel or anything, we're just going to lob some of these in, chuck them down at 40 yards and let's see how they go because I'm I've never shot these and I'm genuinely interested to see what is going to happen. Are they going to be a good pellet? Right, so precision shooting. The first thing you do is, you know, prep. I wear a glove. Gloves for me are genuinely important. They take the pulse out of the rifle. They make you get a good grip on the peg. Never shoot without a glove. And shirts 110. Uh, I got this one from Intershoot. Remember, no glove, no love. Sorry, children. Right, Air Arms TX200 Hunter Carbine, Vortex Viper Scope, uh, TAC2 uh, Stock. Um, internals are standard uh, 25 millimeter. Um, I used to shoot 22 millimeter, um, which are, I've found really good, but I've just been shooting, well, as we all know, my range finding's terrible. And what I'm trying to do is just go back to the way that I used to shoot back in the day with a Cytron S3 and everything as standard. Um, now, precision. I rest the butt of my rifle on the deck. Now, a lot of shooters, a lot of spring shooters will tell you, no, you must not do this. You must never touch the ground. You must never touch the peg. You must do this, do that. I've set this gun up the way that I like to shoot which is off the deck so I've got a butt pad which has dropped down got a bit of uh, uh, it's basically plastic that's uh, you put it in hot water and it's moldable plastic and on the front here I've got a barrel weight or you could use a silencer and that is 180 grams of uh, wheel weights go onto eBay type in adhesive wheel weight and you'll see them they come in 60 grams each there's just three of those wrapped up with a bit of electrical tape, nice and easy. Or you could get a larger one of these, a cocking aid, maybe make it from depleted uranium or something like that. Do the way you want, but that's pretty much it. Right, so out there you can see we've got two targets, left and right. We'll go on the right first. So let's see what this gun is like straight out the bag. It's today's Monday, Monday, today's Monday. I shot yesterday at the Nationals. Um, brilliant time at Throckmorton, truly wonderful venue. Had a load of, had a great time, shot okay. Um, apart from my positionals, I didn't kill a single positional. Something I've really got to work on. So, out the bag, let's see how we go. So no warm up, nothing. Cold spring, cold everything. Aiming at the right hand target, 25 yards. Bloody safety. Well, fairly happy with that. 
mosquito. <sighs> Go away. Go away. One of the problems we've got here on the range is we've got a pond to our right hand side. And we've got mosquitoes here the size of pterodactyls. Okay, we'll put three through. That one fractionally higher. Got a little bit of wind left to right, but it's quite shady down there at 25. Again, I think I think I went through the bottom hole. There you go, we'll do two more. And as I'm shooting, as you can see, I'm gradually gripping the peg. I'm putting my head on the cheekbone, not on the soft squidgy bit, but on the bone, on the stock. And I'm getting my head into position. I'm quickly just bobbing up and down just to make sure I'm in the center. Take a breath. Hold it. Forget to take the safety off. And there we go. We've pretty much put four shots through the same hole at 25 yards. Now, I'm gonna take a shot and I'm not going to align my eye central with the scope. I'm going to bring it off slightly to the left and let's see what happens. As you can see, I've got a pig's ear here. This is a Bisley, uh, this is one made by Bisley. Um, it's always uh, put on with a cable tie so that it doesn't move and I'm not going to take it off because I've got this gun set up just the way I want it. But not having your eye perfectly central can cause error. We've spoken about this in the past. Put your thumb in front of you, close one eye, Move your head about and you can look like your thumb is moving. That's essentially parallax error. So again, we're going to go at that same hole. And I'm moving my head slightly left until I can see it's starting to black out. So that I know I'm not completely central. And I'm going to forget to take the safety off. And as you can see, we've gone high and right. And that's because my eye was not completely central with the scope. So when you're practicing, especially if you've got a magazine fed rifle or uh, a PCP, don't just leave your eye permanently on like that and just keep on racking through the rounds. Always take your head off, always put your head back on and concentrate on physically getting as close to the center as you can. Tell you what, let's use that left hand one. Let's just chuck a, a barracuda down. Don't know if I would usually recommend this sort of, just going from one shot, you know, one type of pellet to another without cleaning the barrel, but why not? It feels quite nice and tight in the breech. We do three at uh, 25 yards. We go on the left hand one. Let's see. Oh, come on, Gary. Okay, high and left. Again, four five ones as opposed to four five twos, but let's hope they all go through the same hole. Same hole. Well, ragged, considering we haven't cleaned the barrel. Hmm. 
interesting through the same through the middle so let's just do another two slightly high Okay, so they all seem to be hitting slightly higher, which sort of tells me that even though they are 844 grains the same as the JSBs, they may be going fractionally quicker. So one thing we're going to do is we're definitely going to check them against the Chrono. If you'd be interested in a full review of the Barracuda 8, uh, 844, sorry, Barracuda 8 844s, please let me know in the comments below or drop me an email at lifeatarange at gmail.com. Right. So let's push it out to 40 yards and see how we go. Go away mosquito. I hate mosquitoes. Somebody actually told me the other day that they've started a drinking game. Because apparently I start every section with OK. Hmm, I think they've probably got a good point. Um, so we're out of 40 yards, it's a 25mm target I think across. Again we're going for the red bit in the middle. Uh, we're going to start on the right hand side like we did before and let's see what kind of accuracy we can get. We're back on the JSBs. First shot after putting the slightly harder H&Ns through. Let's see whether or not that will have affected this first shot. I'm actually quite interested to see that. And let's see if I can actually remember to take the safety off. Okay, there's wind out there. Okay, bit low. But we'll continue aiming at that mark. Well, I think that went through the same hole. Either that or I completely missed the board. Well, I think that went fractionally left. Because I'm not in the centre of the shoot and see target, I'm not entirely positive that I'm hitting it. Oh yeah, I can see one slightly left, I think. I think that's good. Last one. Last target. And that one pushed slightly high. But then again, we're at 40 yards in about seven or eight millimeters, sorry, seven, eight millimeters, seven, eight miles per hour of wind. And it's coming from slightly behind, so it might have just caught a, a slight up gust. So let's have a go. Actually, before we do that, right. Precision. We spoke about always making sure that your eye is directly behind the scope. It's, it's central, up and down, left and right. Now, if you notice, this post here is a bit wobbly and it's not completely straight. 
So if I put my rifle and I put it up against the post, it's going to be slightly canted over to the right. So instead of having it nice and straight like that, the rifle might be slightly twisted. Now having a cant on a rifle can cause a big problem. So we're going to go on the left hand target and we're going to cant the rifle to the right. Okay. So we're dead centre and now we're just going to cant the rifle. Okay. I think that went high left. We'll do the same again. Fall over. Again, rifle uh, pellet went left. So now what we'll do is we'll just go back to making sure it's nice and level, and we'll try and go down the throat. The wind is left to right, so it's not the wind blowing it out. Okay, well, not exactly sure where that hit. Don't think I'll count it. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, that was so powerful, it actually knocked the thing off. But as I'm sure you can understand, if we've got the rifle here and it's canted over, it's no longer going to be aiming directly at the target. There is going to be uh, an offset. And if you've got higher mounts, that makes it even worse. So like a two or three degree at the base with medium mounts might be seven or eight degrees here. But if you've got high mounts up here, by the time you get up here, it's going to be like 10 or 12. That's why high mounts can be very, very dangerous. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there, I'm going to put out a couple of new targets and then we're going to try some barracudas. See how we go. Well, we've got a target down there at 40 yards and now we're going to try the barracudas. We're going to do three shots on the one on the right and then we're going to do three shots on the one on the left. Let's see how we go. I say this isn't a genuine fair test on these barracudas because we haven't cleaned the barrel, we haven't really set up. We're just doing this for a bit of interest. Okay, so but the rifle rested on the ground, thinking about the breathing, breathe in and hold. Remember to take the safety off because you're an idiot. And think about what you're doing with the, the hand at the front. You're not gripping the rifle, you're just guiding the rifle. The rifle is still recoiling, but they don't recoil that much. So if you put it up against a flat wall, the gun's going to be terrible. But you see, the gun's still capable of moving that amount. I'm going to shoot you, mosquito. So head down on the cheek piece, centralise your eye. Think about your breathing and your trigger. Take the safety off. Okay. Now, just then, I didn't mean to shoot. Well, I did mean to shoot. I was taking up the first stage. But I need to do some work on my trigger. It's often a case that I'm not exactly sure when it's going to go off. So that's not a problem, it's probably just a bit dirty and gunky. Would you like to see a video on me doing out a full strip of a TX CD trigger? Um, I'm, I think they're the same as with the 400 and the 500s and I think they're the same trigger pretty much across the range. 
So would you like me to do a full strip and polish and tune of a, of a TX trigger? If so, let me know, and you know where to let me know, in the comments below. Right, okay. Same aim point. Taking that bloody safety off. I'm gonna take an angle grind of this safety. Okay. Definitely going left. Not entirely sure, I think it might have gone through one of the uh, one of the holes of the other two we'll do another two but so far i'm quite impressed my issue now is i don't know if they're going through the same hole on the shoot and see target or if I'm making another hole down there because it's a little bit dark but last target a bit sweaty it's gone from thunderstorms to uh, to being really warm okay well the question is what do you think of that as a group with a TX200 spring gun with standard internals and yes it's in a fancy stock but I'll put a picture up here of the stock I used in the 2017 HFT World Championships. 2017, 2019, that's a long time ago when I could shoot. And it's just a bastardised version of a standard TX. It's, uh, you know, it, it's got a hamster made of a bit of 2x4, it's got a 3D printed uh, butt pads. And so you don't need to spend hundreds of pounds. You can modify your own stock and you can do it a darn sight better than I can. What I'm going to do now though, and this is, you're going to have to believe me on this. I've got a 45 yard target just behind and I know that I've got half a mil dot of drop between 40 and 45. So I'm going to aim at the top of the kill, sorry, top of the target. Okay, well, that's quite interesting. I'd heard that the ballistic coefficient of these is very, very good. And that would be fairly evident there because it was less than a half a mil drop. It was around about a quarter of a millimeter drop. And that's why apparently the FT guys absolutely love these Barracuda 8s because they fly very, very flat, flatter than the JSB. But that's going to need a lot of testing and i'm gonna be really interested and luckily i've got quite a few of these so i'm gonna enjoy having a shoot with them but but that's essentially it it's nothing too complicated it's make sure your eye is in the correct position make sure your trigger is set up nicely and it's clean polished whatever because having a really sloppy trigger and having it graunchy and heavy and all that you're never going to get precision shots out of that make sure your scope is dialed in correctly make sure you've got good pellets you check them you can weigh them you can lube them i personally just take them straight out of the tin and just have a look at the skirts before we put them down there In fact, I'll tell you what, just... i hope you've enjoyed today's video um we're going to be having a few little changes here at life at a range nothing that's going to affect the video side but as you know i write for air gunner magazine well air gunner magazine and air gun world have been now amalgamated and I'm going to be writing for Air Gun World. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring back the Beginners to Winners series. And we're going to go at everything from scratch. Buying your first gun, buying your first scope, kneelers, standers. And we're going to go all the way through um, and create a series that will enable you to be able to go, yes, boom, 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 and find the one that you need to do over the next couple of years. The second video of the month is just going to be me cocking about and doing the sort of things that you guys want me to do. 
So, as ever, please drop me an email at lifeattherange.gmail.com or in the comments below um, and tell me what you want me to do and I will try and do it. Go away, Mosquito. Um, Air Gun World are doing some great deals at the moment on subscriptions. You can get a digital subscription for I think it's between 20 and 30 quid. You can get one delivered to your door for about 50 for your whole 13 issues throughout the year and you get a couple of million quids worth of free insurance as well. So that's the hard sell. Um, also, I've had some great message from you guys who've been into our wonderful sponsor, Crawley Shooting Supplies, and they've said they've had some absolutely some fantastic service. So please show Crawley some love. Um, they're really looking after us here at the range and enable me to keep on doing things and buying pair gun pellets to test. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Take care of yourselves. Be the person your dog wants you to be. And we'll see you all again on the range very, very soon. Ta-da.